Hello everyone, Sir Monkey Sword Zappy here, back again with Seven Deadly Sins. We're on episode four, and uh, before we get started into the pre-discussion, uh, I'm drinking rum. Um, so this is the quintessential alcohol uh, choice for me, and I recommend anybody who is of legal age to try it because it's fucking beautiful. Um, you know, rum and coke, pretty. You know, not exactly an original choice of drink, but it is definitely top tier. Um, <laughs> so yeah, give it a go. Uh, it's also yeah, it's like this is a. This is a big, a big moment in uh, in my channel because this is the first time I'm actually drinking rum uh, during a reaction. <laughs> so yeah, without further ado, yeah. Uh, oh, fucking hell! All right, bit of fizz there, bit of carbonation. Um, can't go wrong with a bit of that. Right, episode four. So in the last episode, episode three, uh, we met our second uh, seven deadly sin, Diane, who is a giantess. She is fucking huge. Um, and she is what is she the? Envy. Envy, that's right. Um, so yeah, we met her. Gil Thunder apparently uh, knew where they were in the forest, even though it's, ha it's easy to hide out in there. I have a, a an idea of how we found them, because I think before Diane realised it was Meliodas, she was like going a bit mental and shit, and uh, you know... Anyway... Uh, yeah, we met her. So Gil Thunder, we got a bit of information on him, a bit of background. Um, his father was the Grand Master that um, was originally killed um, and uh, that's the reason why the Seven Deadly Sins are uh, classified as um, criminals and whatnot because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time um, and there's also that uh, unanswered question about who exactly knocked out Melio uh, Melio Meliodas 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 I think it's Meliodas right <laughs> yeah I need to keep like reminding myself how it's pronounced I'm sure it's Meliodas right um or, or even if it is a knockout thing, it must be because he said that he, he can't remember anything after that, and he woke up in a in a what was it cave, something like that. Um, but yeah, and then Gil Thunder gives some uh, information about uh, the other seven deadly sins. One was apparently dead in the necropolis, and the other one is imprisoned at base prison. So uh, three of them are unaccounted for, and then obviously you've got Diane and Meliodas. So. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what uh, what happens. I don't think there's anything else to really talk about um, last episode. So we're gonna get an episode four and see what we get. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, episode four. Right. So, uh, Ban is out. <laughs> he literally just got himself out. He didn't need any help from anyone. So, I can only assume then he could have got out at any time he wanted, but I'm assuming, I don't know, he, he must have been just waiting for uh, the captain to show up, right? Like, that must have been just what he was waiting for, because otherwise why would he just, why would he make himself have to succumb to like, you know, fucking, like, as little food as possible and all that kind of stuff. I wonder, hmm, maybe he's just a bit of a, bit of a psycho, <laughs> I like him though. Um, like, that whole... <laughs> the fact that he dodged it so that she would cut his beard. Like, that one instance, and he's already, like, my favourite character. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Um, so, yeah. Um, he said at the end there, like, wounds made by him are a special case. He said, like, oh, what wounds? Except, except this one here. So... Interestingly enough, I think he has an ability to heal himself. Um, but either he couldn't heal that burn, or whatever it is, or he chooses not to because it's by him. Um, I'm inclined to say that the person who gave him that was Melio uh, Meliodas, really. Because... I don't know. I mean, I don't think it, it seems a bit too much of a stretch to say that, like, Ban, because he, he is the he is the same greed, that I wonder if if he was, like, a maybe, like, a thief or something beforehand, and when he got caught, Meliodas was the one, the one that, like, gave him punishment or something for it. And that's what he ended up getting because of it. Um, I can see, like, some sort of story like that. Um, and since that, it, like, almost like... Um, um, with Attack on Titan, how Levi got introduced into the Survey Corps, um, a bit of a similar sort of situation. I can see that like being the case. Um, 
So we'll go with that theory for now. Um, but yeah, could have gotten out any time you wanted, man. I mean, it just I think it's just like it's over these the, the course of these like episodes. It's just showing just how like easy it is for like the seven deadly sins to do anything. They haven't particularly come up against any real challenge, have they? Um, which I'm kind of fine with, because um, I'm just kind of like taking it as a sort of a comedy adventure show at the, at the moment. Um, but I feel like it does have the ability to go like, you know what I mean, to, to up the stakes if it wants to. Um, but I'm absolutely fine with the, the way it's going now. Um, so yeah, at the very beginning, M M Meliodas is basically... Um, you know, when Gil Thunner's like, hmm, you took that hit on purpose, it's like, well, so he, he can just take hits like nobody's business then. Like, even when he eventually apparently succumbed to it and, like, he didn't reach his bed, I'm, I don't know if it's a case of, like, he just passed out from exhaustion or, like, or he was putting up a front, you know? I wonder if Meliodas has, like, this kind of, this idea in his head because he is the captain that he always has to seem like he's in control so you know because the way that you kind of look at him now his sort of his personality is very you know what i mean like there's like you don't think that i think it's easy to look on the surface of his personality and just think hmm, nothing phases him so therefore he's not that interesting of, of a character but i feel like there's definitely something underneath and I wonder if that's like a, a facet of it, like him have like always trying to um, keep that sort of uh, that idea going. Like he's he's the captain; he always needs to feel like he is he is uh, on top of everything, and, and everything's fine. And um, so it's possible. Um, or he was just yeah, or, or he just passed out. <laughs> he's just extremely tired. But it doesn't matter because. Um, well, we'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, Meliodas saying that he will go to one of them. I like that little touch um, saying he will go to one of them. Um, because I think it would have been easy just to say like, oh, we'll go, like, you know what I mean, we'll go see one of them first. But I think because he, because Gil thought I was right in front of him, he didn't want to give him a straight up answer to give him an idea of where they are actually going because there's still a chance that like if... Um, if Meliodas was like, all right, we'll go uh, go get banned from base prison, that there's still a possibility that uh, Gil Thunder might say, like, oh, it's like a 50-50 chance. He might go go um, meet them at uh, Necropolis where King is, right? And then it's like, oh, well, fuck. You know what I mean? So I like how he's like not... He, just a slight little, slight little touch that uh, he didn't want to give away anything. So I like that. Um... And then we cut away to, uh, well, after Gil Thunder got thrown halfway across the world. <laughs> I love, like, there's something funny, right, about, like, being thrown that far. And you can just imagine the look on his face of just, like, like, if, if, if it was in, like, <laughs> modern times, like, modern technology, you can imagine him flying through the air just looking at his watch on the way, on the way, like, on the way across. Because <laughs> the fact is, you fucking, you fell... And he must have just got up like nothing happened. Or he probably landed on his feet um, and just walked off. You know what I mean? So I said, like, in the reactions, like, that's a great form of travel. <laughs> it's like you can get places quick. Um, but yeah, so he landed it in a village. I don't know which village it is. I don't think it's um, Dal Mali, where they are, where uh, Meliodas and whatnot are, are there now. Because I feel like. Um, I feel like Diane would have thrown him in, like, the opposite direction, right? So maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it. I don't know. I don't know which town it is. But the villagers were praying to some divine being because uh, they were wanting divine retribution um, on the Holy Night. So, depending on where that village is, I don't think it's the same village that we were just at like a few, a couple episodes ago because that would be like... Because I feel like that village was much smaller. This one feel, felt a bit more like, expan like expansive. Um, so I feel like it's a different one. If that's the case, then it means that not everybody... I, th I feel like more p people are actually aware that it's the Holy Knights that are uh, bad people, you know? Um, 
which is uh, which is interesting. I wonder where they've got that. I'm thinking like maybe it's something to do with the way the Holy Knights are actually treating the general populace now. I think like maybe because they're in charge, they kind of you know throw their weight around a bit. But you know, um, right. So we got introduced to the weird facts. <laughs> what fucking name that is, man. It's like, uh, can you, why would you ever want to be part of that group? I don't know. I guess, well, if it's a, if it floats your boat, I guess. Which it must do, considering... Well, there's four of them, but mainly Freezia. That fucking... It just because she, con she controls bugs, she just wants to be one. Like, fucking that helmet, man. So she can control, like, bugs and whatnot with that weird sort of, like, whip thing that she has that sort of has two tendrils. Controlling bugs. The rain acid. Hawk said it was... Hawk said poisonous, but... I mean... Acid isn't. It's hazardous. It's corrosive. I wouldn't say it's poisonous, <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe they have. Maybe they have multiple uses. Acid rain could just be one of them. But um, I mean, I just love the fact that like they're like out running against it and are fine with it because like it's eating through, you know, like concrete and shit like that and like all this material it's like well that's gonna it's gonna absolutely eat through like skin and shit innit like I would not be running through that <laughs> but they were fine with it they got those dodging tactics down I think um so yeah Freezia, Golgius um Ruin and Jude um and then Jericho who's like the apprentice holy knight which I guess is kind of like working underneath the holy fangs right now I guess like maybe being you know taught by them or you know just doing their dirty work i guess uh but jericho's like an apprentice holy knight so so yeah they're in Del uh, they're all in dalmali town right now um yeah it just uh, it felt very strong like i felt so sorry for uh die on this episode because like you know what i mean she's so big like people don't want to like everyday people don't really want to associate with her because she's a giant so they're ultimately just you know, the preconception is, oh, she's a monster because she's huge. Um, you know, and while Elizabeth's, like, in there, be able, like, being able to buy by side, like, the saddest, the saddest scene, like, it's, like, that's one of the saddest scenes, like, I've, I've, I think, I've, like, I've seen in, like, my reacting, like, in this past year of reacting, that's probably one of the saddest, like, scenes, like, like, that I can think back of right now. Just like her sitting outside having to look through a window and that's the only way. Like that's so sad, man. But because um because he never saw the he never treated her like she was something different, right? Uh I think that can sort of uh I think a lot of people can sort of relate to that. Like if if they you know, I think maybe if they have like a disability or something like that, like the last thing someone with a disability wants is for you to treat them like they're any different just because they have they have a disability or something. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's not surprising that you feel so attached to them because that would have been, well, like you said, that was the first time anyone ever, ever tr like treat her like she was just normal. Um. So yeah. Um. So we've got to look at her power, which I I'm not entirely sure what it is. It looks like it could be tree trunks. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> I don't know if she like I don't know if she if her abilities to sort of like like magic I don't know like magically make them like I don't know make them appear and then she grows them out of the ground. I don't know if that's the case or if like she needs things under there. I don't even know if we'll get that kind of detail, but they look like tree trunks to me. The only reason why I'm thinking it could be like that because I'm thinking like maybe she actually created the forest in which she lived. Um, but uh, but that uh, that remains to be seen. Um, so yeah, and then we had fucking Doctor Dana who was who was fucking in on it. The bastard, the cunt. <laughs> should have fucking, ugh, should have known. But um. Yeah, poison them with like nightshade and shit like that. Nightshade's something that keeps cropping up across all like a lot of fantasy stuff. Uh, I like how like I really like how there how that carries across fantasy. Like it's something that is like 
it just remains to be a thing of like if you want to poison someone you use nightshade in fantasy and that's like something that's crossed over from like you know what I mean probably probably J.R.R. Tolkien right I'd imagine um because he's the one that created all that shit um but I like that um so yeah He's poisoned, which obviously isn't going to affect him all that much because <laughs> he's fucking, because he's that good. Um, but I don't know, maybe, I don't know, depending on how Ban's, um, like how his power works, if, if he's able to heal himself, I don't know to what degree, because he can feel like, he can heal physical wounds. I don't know if he can like heal, you know, poison and shit like that, but uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see. It wouldn't surprise me if Meliodas next episode just like got up <laughs> and was like, hmm. Just brush it off. Feel a little funny. That's it. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. But that is all. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, description below. Uh, links to certain things. Discord. Get yourself over there if you want all the information regarding my channel. That's where you want to go. Also, you can come over and talk to me in the community. Full length. Ten. Um, no. No, 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 no. That's Patreon. What the fuck? How did I get there? My website. Somemongster.com. Get yourself over there. All my content is over there. And you can become a member. Uh, and Patreon. So I do have a Patreon. If you don't want to support me, I'd be very much appreciated. Uh, different tiers and rewards depend on how much you want to support me with so there is early access five dollars a month that will be that'll give you access to shows a week early um and it'll give you uh four episodes of well by the time this goes out public it won't be fate anymore it'll be something else but there'll be one show that's basically four episodes every week um so you know just have a look and you'll be able to find it on patreon ten dollars a month that is a uh, full length everything i gets a full length exclusive tier that is $15 that gives you uh, access to a bonus show which I'm currently reacting to which this was done through and um, by the time this goes out on YouTube for the general public I'll be re reacting to season 2 of 7 Deadly Sins over on my exclusive tier it just basically means it's, ex it's exclusive while it's airing and um, it's essentially the equivalent to a, like an extremely early access um, once I've finished that season it'll be out for the public like uh, this ep like this season was um, so yeah that's that Elite tier, fifty dollars. Every time you pay fifty dollars, you get a choice of the show that you want me to react to, and I will react to it. We'll go to the bat of the list. I don't know seven shows. My team will all get round to it, but I will do it eventually. But if you don't want to wait that long, um, and you want to, your show to be reacted to next, then you want to get God tier, which is hundred. But that is all. So thank you for watching. See you all next time. Bye bye.